realised there's a whole new audience watching the show, possibly for the first time ever. So I feel I should give you the story so far. I think that's only fair. Baba! Whose little pony is that? Gay gays! <laughs> and whose little ball is that? Gay gays! And whose little porridge is that? Mamas! Oh! <laughs> My name is Graham Cyril Kennedy. <laughs> which a lot of rude people find amusing. Cyril said... Mm. <laughs> he always starts like that. Cyril said, Oh, my friend Derek... <laughs> well, and the, I've, I've weathered all the storms in, this, in, in the television industry. This station has asked me to announce that the report of a bomb being planted in Studio 9 here in the studio audience has been deemed a false alarm. <laughs> so I'll just say... <laughs> Our comedy items range in quality from extremely subtle, like this... Well, I'm afraid there doesn't seem to be much I can do, sir. I don't think we can arrange an aircraft to fly at your time. No aircraft. Oh, yes, good sir. heavens above, I'll just have to do it the hard way. To the ultimate in satire like this. This is Graham with his volivi <laughs> riding on her teeth. <laughs> now I put it in an envelope. Fuck you, Lord. Right. right. <laughs> so I've written with the molivi on the her teeth. Now pass me an envelope. Fuck you, Lord. <laughs> All right, I'll get it myself. <laughs> so, let's get on with the show. Oh! Hello. Behind me is Studio 9, the most famous studio on Australian television. In the pantheon of TV personalities, Australia's Hollywood, Graham Kennedy stands alone. The life story is now folklore. The weird little kid with the bulging eyes, as he calls himself. The lonely only child of working class Melbourne, whose parents split, gets his break as a radio sidekick, then fronts a live TV show right through here that nobody expects will last more than four weeks. But four decades later, we are still celebrating him as the king. Now shortly you'll see Graham doing something that he never does, something he's really uncomfortable doing, talking about himself. But now here's some classic Kennedy comedy. And that phrase that every Aussie has pinched. That was a joke, Joyce. <laughs> Joyce, I'll tell you what, me bum so tender, I could sit on a 20 cent piece and tell you the date. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh. Steady on now, dear. Here, oh. I'll give you a bit of that. Oh, be oh. careful of your wharf supports now. <laughs> what was that, George? Watch your wharf supports, gently. That's what do you mean? Wharf support. Piles. <laughs> 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 oh, God. I tell oh, you the what, pain dear. is terrible, George. A bit of breakfast and you'll soon forget about the pain. Joyce, where I feel sore, the breakfast isn't going. <laughs> oh, Joyce, Joyce, you can say this to me and it'll be very funny. Uh, say this to me. Money can't buy love. Say that. Why? Well, if you say that to me, I will come back with a rejoinder, which will have you rolling on the floor in mirth. Uh, Money can't buy love. Very love. well, dear. <laughs> Money can't buy love. Maybe not, but give me twenty dollars and let me do me own shopping. Three <laughs> twenty dollars, that's what a pro charges. <laughs> this is the funny one, that one. <laughs> That 
was a joke, Joy. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You may eat. <laughs> yes, you can. Oh, I did it the wrong way. It's confused. Sit. You may eat. Uh. <laughs> Rover boy. This is delicious here. This is pal dog food. Uh, Rover, darling. <laughs> Rover? Oh, he's... <laughs> People still say, whatever happened to Rover? And I say nothing, he's fine, he's one of the few 42-year-old Labradors. <laughs> they go, oh, yeah. What do you think happened? <laughs> he's dead. Did you mention that on IMT? Did he die on IMT or afterwards? Um, I mean, during the period lot, of IMT, lots, lot, lots, lots of, of others people, did. A lot of people did. I'll do the jokes, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, Bert and Patty Newton took him, and I think he he died with them. You think? You don't know? Yeah, me. he did die with them. It was a it was a very sad occasion. I remember Bert ringing me, saying, "You'll never guess," and I said, "Patty's dead," and <laughs> he said, "No, Rover." <laughs> Graham, let me wish you uh, many happy returns and uh, for a happy birthday. Sixties, not old. Not if you're a tree. I don't feel old at all, but I am 60, Ray. Thank you for your good wishes. Graham, are you in retirement, semi-retirement, or just between TV spasms, as you like to call it? No, I'm retired. Well, at least I th thought I'd retired until now. I, the network nagged and nagged and nagged about this, and I got ridiculous faxes from people saying, we want to honour you, you are fan we want to honour your contribution to the industry. They didn't mean that at all. They meant, Here, here's an in-house cheapie, that we can do quickly, <laughs> get it on quickly, perhaps rate a point or two, and it won't cost us 300000 like every other hour. But you, could you deny that you enjoy the mantle of being the king of television still? Even No, no, no. I, I didn't call myself king. I did, your journalists called me king and golden boy and mercurial and all those. There are worse titles, aren't there? Yes, but a lot of people think, oh, you know, he thinks he's the king of television. I don't think that at all. Someone else thought that. But you were the king. Ray, we were too busy to think about kings or... There was no jealousy, as I remember. If you're doing no a queens. five... I beg your pardon? No queens? A few. Yeah! I'm weak through like a foot! Oh! <laughs> We are the only two of our company left. All the others are dead. <laughs> Don't laugh here. Don't cry. Have courage. <laughs> what does he <laughs> Go away, dark angel of death, and take your bosom with you. Oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying, dying, dying. dying. see good acting like this <laughs> no I mean this is first class stuff this. no don't save it how much of that was scripted how much of it was that prepared how much of those early days was <laughs> nothing I've got no notes on me at all this is coming straight out of the bush uh, <laughs> about 1957 none of it was scripted except the live ads because we didn't have writers I don't know why it didn't occur to us to employ writers but we didn't Jeff Cork and I would chat away, hoping that something amusing would happen. Sometimes it did, sometimes, sometimes it didn't. And then you threw to the singer, and then you did a live ad, and then you had the juggler. It's a bit like, you know, 
what you used to do in the afternoon. But you were breaking the rules, if there were rules of television, that in fact you were, I wasn't you were doing something revolutionary? None of us knew anything. Cameramen didn't know about cameras. The audio people didn't know about sound. Lighting was hideous. Nothing much has changed. Um, <laughs> nobody knew anything, but thank God neither did the viewer. They thought it was magic. Wait! Don't jump! Don't jump! What for? I'm from the television news. If I get this scoop on film in the news, I'll get a rise. So don't jump. Stand back! I'll jump. Don't come any closer. Well, I can't get a shot from back here. Look, look here! Look here. Oh. Oh, nearly pushed me off. Don't forget, as you're going down, smile. <laughs> Listen, the angle you'll be taking, son, you won't see me face. <laughs> What is this for? This is to help you get up on the piano. Oh, I don't need that. I've been practicing that all week. I, I don't need that. No, you I can say you. not. You can I go can, Yes, go. I don't want that. Yeah, it's nice of you to want to help me like that, honey. But I thought that would be a wonderful way to get you up onto the piano. Well, I've been practicing, though, and I, I think that I can do it pretty good now. You can get up on the piano by yes. yourself? Yeah, I, I think I can. Ladies yes. and gentlemen. Could they give me a little music? Helen Boyce. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Boyce. To get up onto the piano. Yes, right now I'm going to try. Wait, I'll get. No, not there. Wait a minute. Now. I. Oh, I think I. I think I got it now. <laughs> I'm always interested to know this. What did you expect when you came along to? How did you? You'd seen the program before, eh? Yes. <laughs> uh, what did you think I'd be like? I hadn't really thought. <laughs> Didn't you? What, what did they say at work today? Did they wish you luck and all that? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to marry you because you don't talk too much. I think, <laughs> I think you'd be marvellous. I've got to ask you a question. Here's the question. What are you doing after the show? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not the question. Another question here. I'll pick one that I think you'll like. Are you interested in animals? Not particularly. Not particularly? No. Well, then I don't care what you're doing after the show, do I? <laughs> My favourite thing was the sketches in, 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 the, uh, in the show I did five nights a week. We were very lucky. We didn't have writers, but we got Joff Ellen, comedian, Tiv comedian, uh, who brought all his own stuff with him. All comedians had a trunk full of their own material. Of course it wasn't, with the traditional bits that had been handed down. Some you didn't even know the, the original author. They were so old. Uh, but funny, very funny stuff. Uh, so we, we did the first couple of years, three, perhaps four years, with Joff providing his own sketches. And I was lucky enough to work with him. He was a great comedian. And I learned a lot from Joff. To the point where I could then go into sketches myself. I knew a lot of the business. Um, I knew a lot of the gags, uh, and it all came from Joff. He was very important to me. Still is. It's What do you do if you want a bit of attention? Oh, that's easy. I just throw a convulsion. <laughs> hey, can you, can you throw a convulsion? Yeah. Can you? Hey, you want to see me? Yeah. Yeah, go on. I'll do it for you. What's yeah. it? You ready? Yeah.
<laughs> but physical comedy, we're back to vo Do you call it vaudeville or tivoli? I mean, was that the influence in Australia? Same thing. All right, okay. Variety on stage. Ernie Carroll, uh, Ozzy Ostrich, when did he... He was writing for you in the late 60s. Before. Ernie's a comedy writer. No, Ernie knows every joke. Well, if you've watched Hey Hey, you know he knows every joke. <laughs> um, yes. And Ozzy was so famous that we used him as an act at night. And Ozzy and I would do strange things. Uh, this could... I don't know, but this could be the intro um, to me having to give mouth to beak to a bird. Ozzy, baby. <laughs> oh, he's passed out. I'll have to... There's only one thing you can do. I'll have to give him mouth to mouth. <laughs> oh, I've never done this with a... <laughs> with an ostrich. <laughs> Explosions? I mean, again, you made explosions as invortable. You made explosions part and parcel of your... Yes, there was a lot of blowing up. I think I, I, the lighting people taught me about flash pots and how to make, you know, fake explosions. And I rather fancied this. And I'd say, make them bigger. A and it got to the point where, like, it was dangerous. I, I lost a lot of clothes. All body hair went. <laughs> I said, man, make it bigger. <laughs> Did you really? Did you catch on fire? Yes, I've, uh, co uh, lots of clothes were ruined. <laughs> then there was a lot of sketch rape, I think you'd call it. You know, I'd be Rasputin or I'd be Henry VIII or whatever happened. There was a lot of throwing Patty McGrath on a bed and having my way with her. This is, she was McGrath then, not Newton, because Bert, of course, eventually did do that. What, have his way with her? On a bed. Well, I must be off. Ah, <laughs> uh. <laughs> come here, what are you? Joke. What, what are you doing, Nero? Oh, isn't it obvious what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm making history come true. <laughs> making history come true? Yes. What do you mean, Nero? I'm fiddling my round bird. <laughs> Was it actually written in the contract that you got to kiss Sue Donovan, Jason Donovan's mum, every night? Was that the contract or just a, a side? No, but I think we've got a piece of tape 
of that event. But it happened every night. Well, uh, you or Bert? Well, I was eating. Well, Bert, certainly. Uh, <laughs> heavens. How long have we got? <laughs> There's just one thing uh, that we haven't settled. What's that? My 10%. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, I'm afraid your consultation has gone into overtime, Miss Jones. So my fee will be $13. And mine will be $40. And here it comes. <laughs> What is your field? What, what do you do? What do you, what do you tell people? Who... See, I wouldn't call myself a comedian, and a million people, I just heard them, yes. I heard them say, say that again. Um, I can communicate, sometimes amusingly. I think that's my field. Incredible play, Bob. He's going with the wedding cake, Terry. I haven't seen anything like this since I've been covering food. <laughs> This final round, Perez is not sparing anything. <laughs> you can hear a pin drop in Mendoza Stadium in this final round. The capacity crowd waits to see just what exactly Stendor will do. This may be the most expensive round in food history. Commercials became part of your signature almost in terms of sending up commercials. But the show was full of commercials. That let's make them as, music, as amusing as possible. But could you send anything up? Yes. Right. If you want your product treated seriously, you, you booked a recorded ad or you put it elsewhere. Um, but the whole thing, you know, it, it was just chatty and funny and a commercial could go on for four or five minutes and then... Despite the fact that you sent up the shirts and everything else, Cutlass? Ah, uh, there's a way to send... I mean, you don't say terrible things. You do funny things, perhaps. Forty colour pages telling you how enjoyable a fair star holiday with Sitma can be. Oh, you can have a marvellous time on board uh, the fair star having an exciting time. We have a short film, actually, of some people on a fair star holiday, showing you exactly what it can be like at sea with Sitma on the fair star. Watch. Yes. Oh, it's fun. <laughs> with the price of meat as it is today, it's a costly business, you know, to own a pup. I think it's better to eat it. <laughs> Here's the answer to rising prickies. I'm sorry, prices. <laughs> oh, but Biff isn't just for dogs. Oh, no. There is a big range of Biff cat food, including Biff's latest snack, pussy. <laughs> yes, now you can buy pussy in a can. <laughs> in a can, what will they think of next? <laughs> Peter, could you cut away from me for just a moment? <laughs> Pussy in a can! <laughs> yes. Le oh. <laughs> when it's time to feed your puppy dog. <laughs> yes, wonderful, wonderful, delicious, superb. Tom Piper, the sultanas, raisins, currants, orange and lemon peel, caramel, milk and golden syrup. All go into making this delicious... Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Little custard there. Oh, no, no, really doesn't. 
Doesn't that look appetizing? <laughs> oh, no, it does. Look, no, it really, really does. Oh, I hope we can keep this client. We're losing so many. <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, Anchorfill stores wet in the container a handy plastic uh, glove box pack. Ma pulmana. I wish you would. <laughs> See, I've got one too. He has one, yes. His is the same size as mine. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> mine stretches. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't it? Look? So I've heard. The, the, listen. <laughs> Around the Commonwealth, I would say. <laughs> it's irrespective of race, creed, or colour. <laughs> Here's Herbie. Mock up your dinner. Listen. <clears throat> it stays wet. <laughs> so don't forget, if you want a pair of shoes, make sure they're Raoul Merton, because as we say over every week after this hilarity, of comfort you're certain. When they're hurting by Merton. No, no. <laughs> it's simple, really. Just toast them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mady's Muffins. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if Joff's watching. I'll do the toast for him. The fleecy cloud may kiss the sky. The rose may kiss the butterfly. The morning dew may kiss the grass. And you, my friend. Miss Bennett, uh, excuse me. Could you tell me how to get to TCN Channel Nine? Uh, and will it be from here? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Um, channel. Uh, channel. Channel Nine. Channel 9. Hey! You're Graham Kennedy, aren't you? Yes. Keep going that way another 2,000 miles, you'll wind up in Cape York. Good place for you. Uh, are you a Sydneyite? Yeah. I thought so. You're a weird mob up here. You don't appreciate us. Bloody weird mob in Melbourne if they keep watching you on TV. What about the ego of Graham Kennedy? How important was that for you to be a national figure rather than a Melbourne figure? I don't believe that came into it, Ray. As I say, we were all too busy doing it. The money? Was it the as money huge as, as, as reporter or was that part of the, the press money. machine? The money. It kept going up. Dressing rooms got bigger. Caravans got big presents here. Flowers, cigar, stuff. Uh, and uh, I think I ended with $20,000 a, $20, a show was probably the most I got in the 60s. Was it easy to negotiate with someone like uh, Sir Frank Packer? For, no. For money? It, it's, no, it was, it was never easy negotiating anything with Sir Frank. I've never been more frightened of anyone in my life. Did he know who you were, though? Sir Frank? Oh, I think he thought, you know, the little poofter in Melbourne. And he'd call me Brian a lot, too. <laughs> I think on purpose, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and, you know, Sir Frank was charming beyond words. I just didn't see that side. And uh, he, you'd be playing tennis in Sydney with Sir Frank, and uh, he'd so, and he had you know an, uh, one eye. <clears throat> I always said Sir Frank, you know, one eye was cold and meaningless and hard, and the other one was glass. Um, <laughs> you'd be playing. What, what did he say to that? No, I didn't say that to him. Oh, Jesus, uh, kill you. And you'd be playing tennis. And the ball would go, and he'd say, uh, Brian, is uh, that, that in? And you'd say, yes, Sir Frank, I'll just run down the road and get it. <laughs> <laughs> the charge that you became sleazy, it became sleazy. About the time of the, uh, I'm thinking of uh, Benny Hill and, and Dick Emery and those sorts of programs, was that you trying to shock? No, um, you're getting around to the crow call, aren't you? The infamous crow call. So we tried to make the, the ads on the five night a week show as amusing as possible, but some clients wanted their live ad read, presented seriously. And Rosemary was stuck with this ad for soap and underarm spray deodorant. It was the underarm spray deodorant, we had to actually say these words, you sprayed and the, it contained time capsules so that during the day when you started to spoil, a little capsule would go, oh, time, bang, and your arm would fly. Rubbish, you know. But the soap stuff was so boring. So Rosemary would be over there, and I'd be at the desk. And to liven up a bit, I'd do things into my microphone, very quietly. You know. 
They'll nourish your hair and beautify your hair the way nature meant it <laughs> to be nourished. Use them twice a week and don't forget Seedle's hair conditioner, will you? Because it really works wonders on damaged hair. Uh. <laughs> it is very simple. What did you mean by that? Oh, a, a little tie. I, I couldn't resist. I did a little cry noise. There. And one night it was... I had done it before, but it was, a, it was a, an Australian raven. Australis ravenavas. Didn't know I was going to say that. Uh, and it was simply that. That's all it but was. But on this particular night, this would be months into me going... Uh, it must have been clearer. The audio bloke had the fader up, I don't know. But Adelaide pulled the plug immediately and went, Oh, shit! Punch! And that was the end. And I wasn't fired. Everyone gets this wrong. All that happened, I was asked to pre-record. You know, 20 years later, it's hard to imagine what a public outrage Kennedy caused. The videotape of the Crow Call was kept here in the Channel Line vaults under lock and key. But typically, just like he'd done in comedy, Graham Kennedy took on everybody. Management, the critics, even the government. A few weeks later, opening his show, he sank the boot into Senator Doug McClelland, the Whitlam minister in charge of television. Channel 9, well, they had to censor him once again. Marking the videotape, never to be screened. Well, here it is. I've been through it all before, and nearly always, happily, face up comes Kennedy. Face up comes Kennedy. <laughs> Just thinking of those initials. Uh, it's... It's, um... No, come on. <laughs> ah, well. Edit point. It's beneath my dignity to even go into the laughable and inane carryings on of the Australian Broadcasting Control Board which the good Minister of the Crown, Senator Douglas McClellan is in charge of but I know I can speak for a lot of my colleagues in this industry and several other industries in the entertainment field when I demand here tonight nationally that Senator McClellan be dismissed from office I think what's going to happen, I think you're actually right, I think that's one uh, little portfolio he has that to might go. go out the back door. Well, yeah, I think just and a And as you know, in 1972, as I have been all my life, yeah. I've been that way inclined, and, uh, you know... <laughs> yeah, since 1934 myself. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I voted uh, for this government because uh, I was told by Bobby Lim mm. uh, that brilliant things would happen if we did, and it's worse. And I know a lot of starving actors and entertainers and performers and musicians, and... Uh, it must stop, I think. Mm, it's very sad. I'll say good night to you now. Good night. Well, Bert came back, but Graham Kennedy really was off. Some people had said that for years. Graham never did live television again. The Joker was too wild, too dangerous. And the memory of that crow call haunted television executives for years to come. Here is the weather report. Noah went to the top of the mountain and said in a loud voice, Lord! <laughs> Lord? <laughs> Lord! <laughs> Noah went to... No, not him. Really. <laughs> Noah went to the top of the mountain. Noah from the... Biblical Noah from the Old Testament went to the top of the mountain and he said in a loud voice... <laughs> There's a flood coming. Should I build an ass? <laughs> and do you know what? Noah didn't do live television for a long time. You must start acting quickly. I wish you'd start acting, period. <laughs> Tickles, you know that tickle. Oh, now that's silly. You see, that's stabbing me in the back. That's not right. You know it's not right. Oh, it must be 
true what they say. Rasputin is immoral. <laughs> immortal. I wanted to do a game show. I'd never done a game show. And I heard some dressing room gossip. I think Don Lane was talking to Jimmy Hannon. We might have been doing something called Celebrity Squares. Uh, and they said, Grundy, Grundy's have got this thing. It's terrific. It's the American match game. Uh, we don't know what they're going to call it over here. So I thought, well, if Don and Jim are in it, I'll just check this out. So Tony Connolly... Uh, who was producing Celebrity, he did all the Grundy shows, I think, uh, was also doing Celebrity Squares, and I said, T Tony, tell me about uh, the match game. So he did. And uh, I wanted to do it. I, I'd admired people like Jimmy, who, you know, you do 28 in one day. In Philip Brady's case, you do 126 <laughs> in one day for a dollar an episode. Uh, so I did, and this was a big hit. <laughs> Now start again. Start you know, again. you know your lines backwards. Now come on. <laughs> then, then Dick, turned, Dick turned a bend in the road, you see. Dick, Dick did. Dick did. Then Dick went down this big hill, you see. Dick down. Dick. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Dick did. Dick did. So then Dick saw the stagecoach coming, you see. A stagecoach coming to Dick. Dick did. Good. Dick did. <laughs> So Dick went riding up to the stagecoach, you see. Yes. Dick did. <laughs> yes. Then Dick did a double somersault, but Dick fell off his horse. <laughs> Dick did a double. Clever Dick. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <I'm> <laughs> it's a nice long one. One of the men. This is the longest Dick story. <laughs> Silly. One of the favourites. This... One of the men made a move, you see. Not Dick. No, no, one of the men. So, Dick, <laughs> what did Dick do? I can't wait to hear the finish of this. <laughs> Dick drew his pistol. Dick drew? Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Dick, one of the men made a move. Ah. So, Dick said, all right, all right, he said. He said, I'm going to rob all the women and take all the men to my cabin in the hills. And the fella said, you've got it wrong there, Dick. Yeah. You mean you're going to rob all the men and take all the women to your cabin in the hills? Yeah. Whereupon the coach driver says, you leave Dick alone, he knows what he's doing. Dick. <laughs> Dick, did. Dick did. Were films different? Did films sort of make you a real actor instead of just a, a comic or just a television person? I'd like to think I act quite well. I don't. I think it's, you know, I think people think, isn't that pathetic? Look, he's got a different pair of shorts on what, who's he trying to be this time 10 or 12 movies you've never had a bad review have you i've never had a bad film review no, no i don't right. know this is amazing but i haven't but does that, is that a source of pride for you the yes it is he's the kid who wanted to at least be in the chorus line suddenly he goes suddenly on. getting nominated for a, an afi would <laughs> philip adams decided to produce don's party and it was meant to be cast with all television people uh, Mike Willisey was to play Cooley and Paul Hogan was to be and Barry Crocker was to be Don I was to be Mac and I thought oh beaut in my first important movie I'll be with a lot of chums who can't act either one by one they dropped by the wayside my last hope was Barry Crocker who was going to play Don and he broke his back the day before we started shooting so it left me little weird kid from Balaclava with funny eyes with all these proper actors. And I was horrified and frightened beyond words. But we did it. Now, Janie, have you ever hunted ducks? Uh, no. No, I don't want to hear anything filthy. Well, you wade through the shallows with your rifle at the ready. Duck hunters use shotguns, you know. I like to give the ducks a chance. Oh. Right, here I am, the duck hunter, wading through the shallows. Waiting, 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 waiting. 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 <laughs> Itching for a duck. Waiting, waiting. Ooh. All of a sudden. Oh, nature calls. <laughs> you sure you want to hear this? <laughs>
Now you said, if they're quite right, I'm terrified every time about Coast to Coast, where the talent comes in is hiding the trembling. Oh, that's everything. It's not just Coast to Coast. That's now. Notice how I've got the hands on the knees clenched. So why do you do it? I don't know. I have... I'm not doing it anymore. I want to eat now. <laughs> but why have you done it for all your life? Here you are at 60 and you've done it for the last 55 years of your, or 45 it's years of your life. Because I wasn't trained as a carpenter. That's wrong, Ken. <laughs> I love it when he cries. <laughs> 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 I can't go into my first erotic experience. I can't expand on that. I mean, I remember it as being a very tender, wonderful moment. I, I just wished at the time, remember thinking clearly, I wish I had some company. <laughs> hmm? I've never tasted anything like it. I'm glad you like them. I don't like it, I just I've never tasted it. <laughs> I suppose it could be. Just think, for the first time, Ken, yes. uh, a, a portable massage parlour, and when you're finished, you don't have to pay the $100 for one with a lot. You simply <laughs> do that. I think it's fantastic. Well, not as cheap oh. as... Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, it's fallen into my lap. Oh, good night. And bye for anything. Oh, with this comedy. Yes! We know not what we pluck! The real silly season's back with Hey Hey. You sure is good. It's wonderful. It's 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 Would you do it again for us in close up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. I don't think I'd do that. <laughs> oh, hang on. Yeah, I'll probably do it. How, how would you like to be remembered on your 60th birthday? Well, I was actually hoping, Ray, that everyone might forget. Um, I'd like to be able to go shopping, even now. I'd like to be able to go to a restaurant without people coming up. I suppose it's never going to happen. I, I would really like to be forgotten, if that's possible. All right. Well, yeah, you won't be. Um, Graham, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ray. Happy thank you for this birthday. Thank you occasion. For this. And this is the, uh, the way that I think uh, that people will remember you. Have a look at Graham in action. We've got the film. We've got the film. <laughs> G'day, viewers. All right, then. Which one of these are you in love with? <laughs> <laughs> this charming maiden, sire. Mercia. Well, who's that prettier one over there? <laughs> that's... That's how... Look! It's my manager. <laughs> <laughs> look at that part. That, that's a horse's ass. <laughs> Tarzan! Oh, oh there's all yellow stars. I think they're gonna faint. Tarzan! Tarzan! Oh, I'm doing this camp. No! Oh, no. What? Oh. Are you all right? Oh, uh, oh, I'm. I may never be able to have any children. Oh. <laughs> Next case. Next case. Oh. <laughs> Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years in the business. My knobs never come off before. <laughs>